So a lot of you guys heard our arrangement of my favorite things from upper structure chordals and were asking us, how do you play these voicings? And where do we go from here? How can we take these voicings even further? Great question. Let's dive into both. So maybe a good place to start is from the beginning. What's on the page, right? All we really have here is E minor seven and F sharp minor seven on our first line. And if I just play just what's written, this is what it sounds like. E, G, B, D, F sharp, A, C sharp, E. From there, we can add some tensions. So some non chords. So let's add the F sharp to the E minor seven and then the G sharp to the F sharp minor seven and we'll get this sound. And it's from there we can get into, well, what our book's about, upper structure chordals. So when I do that, I use some of the tensions uh, within the chord and the chord scale pairings and I highlight them with my upper structure chordals like this. Our first chord becomes an F sharp four seven. So basically an F sharp, a perfect fourth above that, and then a perfect fourth above that, E. So I have F sharp, B, and E. And like we said in our course, the cool thing that these upper structures offer us is highlighting some of those tensions we brought into the chords earlier. Like when I play this F sharp four seven, I have that F sharp, I have that nine in there, um, within this really cool upper structure sound, this sort of separate entity that the chord offers us. So when we take that chordal voicing, our F sharp four seven, as it relates to our first chord, and we pair it with our root, our guide tones, the seventh and the third on the left, we have everything we need. We have the essential sound of the chord down here in our left hand, plus uh, some of the tensions that add the color to the chord that we're looking for in that upper structure chordal sound, that cool sound that upper structures offer us. All right, when we do both together, we get this. So now, what's next? Well, one thing we can do is just use the upper structure chordals and just get rid of the roots and any, any thought of guide tones or anything like that and sort of create like an impressionistic interpretation of the harmony that we had before. Now this is gonna sound a little um, abnormal or out of the ordinary when you hear it like this sort of out of context but it's the whole point of this, right? So if I were to just play my favorite things using just upper structure chordals, you would hear this. This sort of weird, nebulous, not specific reference to the original song. And I can put the melody over here to sort of tie it together a little bit. But it's still not quite what you expect to hear harmonically speaking, when you think of my favorite things. And so now that we're here, just kind of focusing on the upper structures, one of, one of the things that might reveal itself to us is that with the inversions or the voicings that I'm using with these upper structures, I might be able to create a line. In other words, the only difference between my F sharp four seven and the way I'm voicing my B four seven is that, that bottom note, the F sharp, turns into an A. And I can get to that A by way of that G and then back again. And I've created this cool line, this, this sort of counterpoint to the melody. And now it's completely taken on a, a totally different um, sound and perspective from the original voicings that we had. So let's take a look at the second line. One of the cool things about not only the upper structures that we're talking about is how we can apply them to a piece 
like my favorite things because it has a lot of modal implications. When I look at lines two and three, what I can do is sort of more or less uh, ignore the harmonic progression and just slap a big E aeolian label on top of those two lines. And that allows me to basically just play whatever chordal I want that's based on that mode. So if I went through that E aeolian mode and just played chordals up E aeolian or E natural minor, these are the sounds I would get. And I can throw those in there randomly or uh, by creating a line that I like as it relates to line two. Let's see, what if we did this? So what would it sound like if I did exactly that? If I have the melody of line two being that, and then on my left hand, I just play ascending chordals starting on this F sharp four seven, and I'll just, I'll just climb up while the melody does its thing. Let's see what that sounds like. Don't forget the launching point for a lot of the things we just mentioned is upper structure chordals and how they work. So check out our book if you're at all confused about upper structure triads or chordals or how to implement them. We're gonna leave you today with a sort of next level advanced voicing of my favorite things and evolve it one more time. Check it out.